hey, what's that? The aeroplane is stationary, and the engine is not running. Then, where is the sound coming from? PU is used to provide a secondary and source of energy to the aircraft. In today's aviation field, APU has evolved to become a very essential system, especially in commercial transport aircraft. That's cool. When and how did they even come up with this idea of APU? Oh, during World War One, APU was a 1.75 horsepower piston engine driving the generator. It was the first APU used in the aircraft and it was used on the British Coastal Class Blimps. Coastal Class Blimps? What is that? Oh, it's a type of airship used by the Royal Navy. The APU on the Coastal Class is used to provide radio transmitter and to keep the airship balloonets inflated in an emergency situation. The current APU is of gas turbine engine type which generate 1800 horse horsepower and does much more complicated processes than the old one. The first jetliners to use the gas turbine engine is... is uh, you mean gas turbine engine APU is it? It was first used on 727 correct? Uh, Boeing 727. Wow, not bad you also know this. Actually, uh, Boeing 727's APU was mounted in between the main wheel wells. Unlike the current jetliners where the APU is located at the tail con section. Although some APUs has been installed in various locations in military and commercial aircraft, the most common place to mount it is at the empennage. It can be easily identified by two holes at the furthest end of the empennage. Oh, okay. So, what is the function of APU anyway? APU provides electrical power for engine start, ventilation and lighting. Whereas the bleed air from APU are for environmental control system, emergency electrical and hydraulic power. Ground certified APU can be useful in the pre-flight phase for cabin cooling and cockpit setup while in-flight certificated APU lessen the demands of the main bit valve during takeoff when maximum performance is required. Besides that, the in-flight certified APU also provides better cabin cooling during descent. Basically, there are four major systems in APU. The first one is oil system. The main purpose of the oil system is to cool and lubricate mm -hmm. the main roto bearings and also the accessory gearbox. Okay. For the fuel system, fuel is supplied to the APU by the aircraft main fuel system. Oh. Yeah. So okay. for fuel system right, it's responsible for shutting down of the APU when the APU electrical control unit detects a failure such failure. as fire. Oh, yeah. okay. So we have two systems, one is fuel system and one is oil system. So what are the other two main systems? Another major system is the ignition system. Most commonly, APU incorporated with a high energy ignition system in the combustion chamber to ignite fuel air mixture. Lastly, APU electrical control unit. It is used to protect the APU by shutting down when APU is in critical condition. Although I know the main engine is started by APU, I'm not very sure how the APU starts. Oh, I'm not sure, is it? Okay, uh, I, think, I think there's an APU inside our APP lab. Maybe we can try look for some lecturer there to help ask, us, ask him to explain to us why, how does it works. Okay, then let's we can go. go later. Okay. Okay, let's go. Okay, well. Hey, we need to study. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, study first later. Okay, okay. So guys, this is Jared's GTC P85-90D auxiliary power unit. This is a very famous APU which was being used on the aircraft such as Boeing 707, 727, 737, DC-9, DC-10 and our RSAF Sport Horse C-130. 
basically all kinds of APUs working principle are same. They are ultimately used to provide main engine starting, pneumatic service for the aircraft and sometimes backup electrical supply. So just like any other gas turbine engine, this APU which is a turbo shaft engine goes through the same Brayton cycle as the other things, other engines such as intake, compression, combustion, turbine and exhaust. Mm. An APU is composed of three distinct modules, namely the power section where the Brayton cycle occurs, the load compressor which supplies compressor for the aircraft pneumatic services, and lastly gearbox section where the electrical power generators and starter motors are coupled to. So guys, for this APU right, the inlet is located at the bottom here, over here, and when this is installed in the aircraft, let's say DC9 for example, this is located aft of the fuselage just before the air stairs. And the intake will be facing down where there is an opening on the fuselage belly which allows air to be sucked in by the inlet. So for this APU, it contains two stage compressors. So firstly, the air is compressed by double entry centrifugal flow compressor which is located here, followed by a second stage single entry centrifugal compressor which is located here. Teacher, I have one question. Uh, unlike the current APU, this APU does have float compressor, right? That's right. So the air required for the pneumatic service of the aircraft is bleed off after the second stage compressor through this bleed air outlet. And this action is controlled by load control unit. And this valve is of butterfly type valve which will open this way to allow air to be out. Uh, so I'll say something. So am I right to say that the APU with a separate load compressor are usually fitted with variable inlet guide vanes at the entry of the compressor. This is to prevent the compressor from stalling like when no when full load is required the vanes will be in full open position and when no load is required the vane will be in close. Yes you are correct. They also have surge control valve which will bleed off excess compressed air overboard when it senses a stalling condition. Oh okay. So after the air passing through the compressor, it will go to the combustion chamber which is located here. Come, let's dismantle this to see exactly how it works. So this is the fuel atomizer which will help to atomize the fuel to have a proper air fuel mixture and uh, there is a swirl vane inside which is used also to have a proper air fuel mixture. If you listen to Mr. Chiam's lecture, this is of Cantite combustion chamber and uh, this, is, this is the igniter plug to provide the sparks. Uh, so, I something else. so how do you start this APU? Uh, according to Mr. Cheong, this APU will, will only be operational next year. But to start a normal APU, the pilot will just push this ignition switch to start position. And the starter will be either energized by APU battery or ground power unit. Then, the APU fuel shutoff valve will open and allow fuel to run through this duct and gets atomized by this atomizer when it enters the combustion chamber. The ECU will operate the igniter here which to provide a supply of intermittent high voltage sparks for the fuel air mixture to ignite. Okay. Oh, so just like the car engines, uh, car petrol engines spark plug, right? Teacher, can I ask you something? If you can draw fuel from the tank without the operation of the pump through natural suctioning effect, am I right? Yes, that's right, but it's not advised as it, it might damage the pumps. After passing through the combustor, the hot expanding gases rush through the turbine as the centrifugal fuel turbine which is located here. Where the kinetic energy and thermal energy of the hot gases will be converted into shaft horsepower to turn the compressors and the generators. Uh, sir, but I heard that some new APUs like Honeywell 131-9 have both axial flow turbine and centrifugal flow compressor for better efficiency and lower requirement of starting drop, right? 
Yeah, that's right. That's called a hybrid system. What is hybrid? Oh, means the engine have combination of both centrifugal and axial flow turbine or compressors. By the way, uh, why are there two holes at the end of the tail? One is for... Oh, I know. One hole is for the exhaust and another one is for air cooling. When the hot air exits at a very high velocity, a low pressure region is created at the APU location. So, the air from the atmosphere is drawn in through that hole for air cooling. Oh, that's interesting. So what are the safety features of APU? Okay, one of them is that the APU is located inside a firewall enclosed space to prevent catastrophic events. Teacher, I know other safety features. The electrical control unit is used to monitor the condition of the APU. Once there is an unfavorable condition such as oil pressure decreasing or oil temperature exceeding the maximum operating value, the APU will shut down automatically to protect the system. High exhaust temperature will also activate the fire detection loop, which in turn closes the fuel shut off valve and bleed air valve to lower the exhaust temperature. So, what are these? Oh, this is a power generator, this is the starter motor, and this is the cooling fan. Oh, so what is this? Can I open? Uh uh uh, don't open. This is an oil tank, and the oil has been in there for quite some time, so there is some stagnant smell coming in from. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Bye. Yep, no problem. Okay. Hi, Siren. Hello. Hey, hi. Hey, you know what? Yesterday the teacher explained to us about the APU, right? I find it very interesting, so I went back home to do a research on it. Oh, really? So, what is the APU? Wait, you go watch this video from the beginning so you understand what is the APU. So, what did you find? So, firstly, instead of using a gas turbine engine, they are going to use a fuel cell technology which means it is similar to that of the hybrid car system. So in this way, the total carbon emissions can be reduced by 6,000 tons of carbon dioxide per year per aircraft. And, and? Oh, and the fuel cell will be used to provide electricity to drive the compressor and the accessory gearbox section. Wow, that's cool. What else do you find? This Honeywell company has developed a new APU which is slightly different from the conventional APU. So for the conventional APU, right, the turbine wheel, for the turbine wheel, the blade and the ring will be constructed separately. And at the final assembly, they will just slot in those turbine blades into the ring. So this results in a small gap between the turbine blade and the ring which acts as the initiation point for the corrosion especially in heavily polluted countries such as India and China. So what this Honeywell does is instead of making the, the blade and the ring into a separate thing they make it into a single part and it's made up of dual alloy. So this results in the elimination of the gap between the blade and the ring and also provide higher resistance to corrosion. Problem sector. Oh yeah, another improvement they have done is to cut down on the sound produced by the APU. The manufacturers do this by calculating the number of turbine blades uh, required for the turbine and compressor. This increases the frequency of the sound produced by the APU beyond human hearing range. Thus, we can't hear anything. Oh. Hmm. So, do you think we can improve the current design of the APU or not? Maybe they can change the placement of the APU. Instead of putting your APU at the tail cone, Hey, hey softer, can... softer. This is library. Okay, okay. They can put it closer to the <laughs> Cannot hear anything. <laughs> oh, they can put it closer to the engine, like the APU in Boeing 727. This will reduce the length of the long ducting used to transfer the compressed air to the engine. 
therefore minimizing the friction loss of the air in the duct, making it more efficient. Wow, that's a good idea. How do you even come up with such ideas? Of course. Maybe they can do this also. Do what? Do you know the current APU is using the same fuel as the main engine, which is high-grade aviation kerosene-based fuel such as Jet A1. It's more expensive compared to the normal commercial fuel as such as diesel instead of using the same fuel as the main engine. They can use a dedicated cheaper fuel just for the APU alone. This will reduce the consumption of the main jet fuel. But this will increase the total weight of the aircraft also, right? You see, uh, every issue has a pros and cons. What matters is if the pros can outweigh the cons. So with the ever-growing technology, using a separate fuel for the APU will definitely benefit the aviation industry. Oh, oh. That, that makes sense. sense. APU provides electrical power for Sorry. lighting. Stop. What? Look now. Look, look where? Inside the camera. Inside the camera. <laughs>